Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out Up My League. I'm Nick Diaz. Paul Maneri did the hardest thing in the world yesterday. He retired. Nope. He gave up on his dream job. Nope. It wasn't that. It was this. I reached out to Scott and asked him if he was in town and and if I could come and visit with him, you know. And and I just told him, you know, that I just hadn't been feeling well and and uh, I just thought, you know, that that maybe the, the program, maybe um, if the program would be better served if somebody else was leading it. The inevitable is that one day you'll have to move on from this world, and there is nothing you can do to stop that from happening. That's a goddamn ugly ugly fact of life. It just is. Paul Maneri, a man who is only one of five coaches in the history of the sport to win at least 1,500 games and a national title, one of five human beings ever, just went up in front of the entire baseball world and admitted to you, hey, you're better off without me, man. You're better off without me. How much of us can say that? How much of us can do that? And it's, no, it's not because Paul wants to. It's because he has no choice. He still has the mental capacity to coach and the energy to coach. But I've been trying to tell people for over a year now that the neck surgeries have caused him so much pain. Well, that's no excuse, Nick. A lot of people are in pain and still get up and go to work every day. Yep, and so did Paul Maneri. But what pisses me off is that the people are saying Paul has been using that as an excuse. He never did. Other fans did, and media members mostly did, but Paul never did. And people confused that with Paul using that as an excuse. Now, we all know how much pain he's been in. The reason why he slouches in the dugout when LSU is losing is because the neck pain is so bad is that he's running on three hours of sleep. He's in excruciating uh, headaches that are so bad that he can't stand up straight. And then when you add the stress of having to deal with the greatest and toughest job expectations in the sport of college baseball, let's see you do your job well under that kind of crap. You can get up and do your job, but you won't do it well. You realize Maneri can't even throw a damn baseball anymore? How the hell is a baseball coach who's who's known as being hands-on supposed to be at his best when he can't even throw a damn baseball? He gets under so much uh, headaches that he can't stand up on his own. He gets dizzy. Whatever. But I think this was the perfect time to do this announcement. Other people were wondering, well, why would you do this now? I'll tell you why. The worst feeling anyone can have, anyone can have, is apathy. Not pain, not heartache. It's apathy. Because that means that you're depressed. I'd rather feel anything than nothing at all. Pretty sure that's a song, but anyways, we're moving on. And sometimes the best way to get out of depression and apathy is to emotionally mourn over something. Get kind of a a jolt start to your system. Because then you're like, all right, I feel alive again. This, this, that press conference was a damn shot in the arm for LSU and for this team and for the LSU fan base. Because the fan base, myself included, had said, let's just get this damn season over with. Just, just rip the band-aid off and let's just move on to bigger and better things. But now it's, screw it, let's go out there one last time and win one for the old ball coach. One last ride. And now you're ready to go to a regional. And also maybe... Some politics in play with trying to pull at the heartstrings of the NCAA selection committee. Maneri mentioned that multiple times during his press conference, just saying. But what we have is this. The greatest job in college baseball is officially open for applicants. Buyers beware. Now, without further ado, who will replace Paul Maneri? There are a lot of names being thrown around, but I'll just keep it short and sweet. I'll go with what D1 baseball reporter Kendall Rogers listed and what his sources inside of LSU are saying to him. He's very well connected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name the coach, then I'll give you the good, and then I'll give you not the bad, but the question marks about each 
candidate. So here we go. First one, obvious. Kevin O'Sullivan at Florida. The good, he's won a national championship. He's an elite coach. We know this. Question mark. There are rumors of him off the field that aren't too good. Um, I can't say it what they are, but let's just think Lane Kiffin, except worse. So LSU coming off of the whole Title IX thing with them, they have to do their homework on that if they're serious about hiring O'Sullivan. So I'll just leave it at that. Cliff Godwin at ECU, the good. He's a young, energetic, uh, 43-year-old coach. Uh, He's been at LSU under Paul Maneri. Uh, He's been called by other former players like Ronnie Rance multiple times that he's been called the best fit for LSU baseball. He's the best fit for this type of job. He's been a consistent winner at uh, East Carolina ECU. He's very cerebral, very smart, kind of a coach's coach, uh, cerebral kind of guy, very level-headed. I've been told that he can handle the pressure of the LSU job. Question mark for Cliff Godwin Uh, He's never done it at a big-time program on his own. Although he's been an assistant at LSU under Paul Maneri, under Bianco at Ole Miss, and under Corbin at Vanderbilt. Oh, and actually, this was before Corbin was at Vanderbilt. But he was at Vanderbilt. So he was at SEC programs, but not as a head man. That's that's the only question mark. Uh, Jim, I hope I don't screw this up. Schlossenagel. Gesundheit. At TCU. Good. He's experienced 52-year-old coach who took TCU to four straight College World Series one at one point. The bad. Uh, with Schlesenagel, it just feels like you're hiring a pulmonary clone. TCU was better this year, but they've been sliding as of late. The a wild card that Rodgers threw out, Link Jarrett at Notre Dame. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say No. Moving on. Tony Vitello at Tennessee. This is one everyone wants to talk about. The good, at only 42 years old, he turned Tennessee into an SEC power in less than four years. When was the last time Tennessee has been this good at baseball? I mean, he just took them uh, to, to an SEC championship final in the SEC tournament for the first time since 1995. He won the SEC East in a year where Florida and Vanderbilt were both preseason number one in both major polls. And he won the SEC East. Players love him. He is high energy and he's known as an elite, elite, and I mean elite recruiter. But you know what the weird part about that is? Is that every time I've seen Tennessee play this year, they are not more talented than Vanderbilt. They are not more talented than Florida or Arkansas. I see Vitello, known as the elite recruiter, just outcoach O'Sullivan and Tim Corbin, who both had one of their most loaded rosters we've seen in the SEC as of late because of COVID eligibility rules giving players another year of, of eligibility. That's an elite company when you can say you are an elite recruiter that also gets teams to overachieve above their talent because you're such a good coach. The question mark for Vitello, and this is where... I'm going to get into some disagreement with a lot of you. He's known as a bit of a hothead, Vitello is. Uh, He almost got in a fight with his mentor at Arkansas, the Arkansas head coach, whose name is escaping me at the moment, uh, almost got in a fight with him. It gets ejected a lot, from my understanding. I guess I I don't know how many times because I don't follow Tennessee baseball that closely. But I got in a Twitter argument with a fan uh, the other day about this, and I said, look, there's nothing wrong with having a coach who has a lot of fire up his ass. All right? And I know that's what LSU baseball fans want because the rule of thumb is hire the exact opposite coach that you just had, especially if he was fired. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. All right? and I, but I love coaches that have fire up their ass. I love the Mulkies, the Will Wades, the, even the Sabins and the Jimbo Fishers, Sean Payton, Ed Ogeron. I, I love the coaches who are like that. I really do. But the thing about those coaches is, is that they know when to cool it off and when to rein it in. That's the difference between a Nick Saban and a Will Muschamp. Both look like deranged lunatics, but one is pretending to be a deranged lunatic, and one just kind of actually is. So you can be a hothead coach of, say, the Miami Marlins and handle the job because they have because it's the Miami Marlins. But when you are a hothead for a job at the New York Yankees, are you too hot-headed? Because if you are, 
that job can get to you if you if you can't stay composed. Or maybe I'm just full of shit. Because I don't know this guy Vitello. I mean, it, maybe his um, hot-headedness is calculated like the way Saban or Skip Bertman do it, where it's not really they're not really losing their composure. It's just a way to establish a culture or get players or fans fired up, get people talking. Uh, that's a real thing that coaches do. Maybe it's one of those things he's doing. I don't know. Because, I mean, the reason why I say that is because I've seen interviews of uh, Tony Vitello, and he seems very well-mannered, very actually soft-spoken, calm, cool, and collected, and he speaks uh, with authority and very slowly. He also looks like an Abercrombie and Finch model, so hopefully he doesn't get tempted by the co-eds at LSU. I didn't say that out loud. There is zero reason, though, for LSU fans to be worried about getting a good coach. You already know this, but I'll say it anyway. Because now, you've got Scott Woodward. That man convinced Chris Peterson to go to Washington over USC football. He sold Kim Mulkey to take the job at LSU, a broken women's basketball program with shit facilities. But now, Scott Woodward has the New York Yankees of college baseball to sell to the world. He catches big fish, and he can, he's going to catch a big one this time. The question is, which one? But here's what I would do if I were Scott Woodward, if you want to know if someone can handle the the job at LSU. Because clearly all of these coaches that I just mentioned and a few others, they're good enough coaches. I mean, they're good enough coaches and qualified to be a head coach at LSU. That's not the issue. But can you handle the monster that is LSU baseball and everything that comes with it? So here's what I would do if I were Woody. If I were Woody, I would uh, tell the coach, say, hey, hey man, when we meet in person, for the interview, it's just going to be you, me, and maybe uh, Stephanie Rimp, who's the deputy uh, AD at LSU. She's my uh, right hand. You know, it's just going to be us, us three. And then, when that said coach walks into the room to meet with Scott, Stephanie, I would have Skip Bertman and Paul Maneri just walk in at the last minute right before the interview starts and surprise him. Be prepared for the interview, but then you catch him off guard with... Skip Bertman and Paul Maneri just staring him down the whole time and just maybe asking a few questions every now and again, but letting Stephanie and and Scott handle the business. Then you see how he handles the interview. See if it's preparation. Everyone's got a, a plan until they get punched in the mouth, right? That's what I would do. But Nick, that's kind of mean. You're damn right it is. But so is the game of baseball. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter and Facebook in the description link below.